So you've just finished building your very own RGB box and that is essentially what it is right now because we still need to install Windows and we still need to unlock some of that hidden performance which is hidden behind loads of programs and settings. So we'll start from the very beginning and we'll show you guys how to set up your PC for the best gaming performance. So the first step with any PC is we need to install Windows. Now you don't want to go ahead and buy Windows on a USB yourself, it is so expensive. Pick yourself up an eight gigabyte or higher USB and install Windows on that. So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna to go to Google and we're going to type download Windows 11. I'm gonna download the Windows 11. You can download Windows 10 if that's what you prefer. Then make sure you click on the Microsoft website. So there is a few options on here. Now, because we're using a USB, we're going to create Windows 11 installation media. Now keep in mind, anything on this USB will be formatted. So make sure there is nothing on it. Let's go ahead and insert that into the PC. Now we can click download now. Now once it's downloaded and you've double clicked on it, you can go through all the prompts, you can accept all of the terms and conditions. And essentially this is just a bit of a waiting process. Now here's where it actually states it needs to be at least an eight gigabyte flash drive. So we've got the flash drive ticked and we're going to click next. We're going to select the flash drive, then we're going to click next. Now this will take a few minutes, so go and grab yourself a coffee and just let it go through the process. A USB flash drive is ready to go, so we can hit finish and then after the setup is done, we can actually take it out of the PC and insert it into our other one. Our RGB box is now powered up. I've installed the USB. I've turned it on. So this is the screen that'll pop up first. So you need to select the language you want to install and the time and currency format. So for me, it's going to be English United States and English Australia. Select your keyboard settings. I'm just going to leave it as US. And I'm going to select install Windows 11. I'm going to select, I don't have a product key because we are going to get one later on from who keys. I mean, I don't want to be paying rubbish prices that Microsoft offers Windows for. I'm gonna select Windows 11 Pro. Now guys, when you're on this screen, at this particular point, before you go any further, I want to make mention that if you have multiple drives in your system and you don't know which is which drive, maybe they're both the same capacities, then it is recommended to uninstall the other ones first. Now the reason for this is, and I've had this happen myself, sometimes some of the Windows files can go onto the other disk and some can go onto the disk that you select. So to avoid that, I usually uninstall the other ones. Also, if you have two one terabyte drives in there, it's very hard to tell which is which. So if there's one particular drive that you want it installed on, you're just better off taking it out of your PC and just leaving the one drive in. So go ahead and select the drive you want Windows on and press next. Now, after a few minutes, we finally get to the personalized customization. So make your way through these prompts. It is very personalized to the individual. So the things you choose won't necessarily be the same as mine. It'll take a couple of minutes. And also don't be afraid if your PC restarts. Quite normal for this to happen through the setup process. You guys ever notice just how much stuff Microsoft is trying to sell you nowadays when you're just trying to install Windows? It is ridiculous. Well, the installation is finished now. However, we are not done with our PC. We have to unlock some performance here. So we're actually going to restart the PC and go into the BIOS. Now to get into the BIOS, just mash the delete key until this window opens. Now BIOSes, they can differ slightly. However, they mainly all have the same features and functions. So when you're in here, you can actually check your system specs and info to make sure everything is showing up. So for example, I know that I should have 48 gigabytes of RAM installed. Here it actually says 49 gigabytes. So uh, lucky me, I get an extra gigabyte. <laughs> However, you can see that the memory frequency is running at 4,800 megahertz. Now we know from the memory that I purchased, it's meant to be running much higher. So what is going on? Well, this is some of that performance that we need to unlock before we use the PC. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on this particular motherboard, we're going to go to extreme tweaker. Now you need to look for something called DOCP for AMD or AI Overclock Tuner, and then look for AMD Expo, or for Intel, you're looking for XMP. So for instance here, I have AI Overclock Tuner, it's on auto at the moment. So if I go down to Expo 1, for example, you can see that a new profile 
DDR5 of 6,000 megahertz with timings of 30 have just been enabled. Next, we wanna look for a setting that is called resize bar or above 4G decoding. So this actually allows for our graphics memory to communicate better with our PC to actually unlock some better performance in specific games, not every single title. If I go into PCI subsystem settings, I found above 4G decoding. I've made sure that is enabled as well. Resize bar support is then enabled. And so we're ready to save and exit. Now, one thing I want to mention is you can overclock your parts to get even better performance. However, if you are watching this video in particular, you are probably not entirely familiar with overclocking. So you should probably do a little more research into it first and learn a bit more before you go ahead and play with any of those settings because I do not want you to do anything to your hardware. Our next step is we want to activate Windows on this. So without activating Windows, we are not utilizing all of Windows features and the other day I was actually filming a video about the Colo GCS 7.1.2 uh, surround sound speaker system and I couldn't actually enable it to be the default output device because Windows was not activated on my new PC yet. So that is just one of the many reasons why I actually needed to activate that PC the other day. And there is countless more reasons why you would want to activate your PC to enable the features. So let me show you how to do it, but let me show you how to do it for cheap as well. So on the Microsoft website, you can actually get a Windows 11 Pro download version, if I tick download, for $199.99. US dollars, 200 US dollars, or you could actually get something for about 10% of the price. So I've actually been using Who Keys for myself for many years now. I think it's coming on four years. I build PCs every single day and I cannot afford 200 US dollars every single PC that we build. So we actually have Windows 11 Pro for $30.96. However, because I've been using Who Keys for a long time, they actually reached out to us and provided a discount code. So you can actually get 25% off. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's check it out. Now by applying the code IFR25, we actually bring our price down to $23.22. That is about one tenth of what Microsoft is trying to charge you for. And guys, just in case you are interested in Windows 10 Pro, well, you can actually get that for $23.48. Or if you use my code IFR25, that brings that down to $17.61. By the way, guys, a little secret tip that I've told a few people, if you get Windows 10 Pro, you install that on your computer, you put that code in, you can actually get the free upgrade to Windows 11 Pro and just save a few bucks here and there. So just letting you guys know. Your PC also doesn't come with Windows or Excel or PowerPoint pre-installed. So if you are after uh, Microsoft Office as well, uh, you can either get a subscription for 109 Australian dollars per year. So that's an ongoing cost or you can buy it outright for 219 Australian dollars and you miss out on all these extra features. Or you can use Who Keys. You can actually get Office 2019 Pro for 71 US dollars, or you can actually get it for 120 US dollars uh, for the 2021 Pro version. However, if I click buy now, and then I apply my coupon code, you can actually get it for 90 US dollars instead of 120 US dollars. So that's code IFR25. So we're gonna go ahead and submit our order. Now they've got plenty of payment methods, guys. Visa, GPay, PayID, Mint. Um, so go ahead and choose whichever payment method you want. Now I just wanna mention that they do have 100% secure 24 hour support. So if you have any issues at all, make sure to contact them. They've got their chat bubble right down the bottom here. Also, you can email them, service at whokeys.com. It is down below there, and they've also got a Skype contact as well. So they will cover you. Now, once you've completed your order, you want to go to the user center and my purchase orders. You can see right here that it is complete already. All you have to do is click view keys and codes. All I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the key. I'm going to type in activate. I'm going to change product key and I'm going to paste the key in and click next and then activate the PC. 
you can now enjoy all of Windows features. Now guys, I wanna be clear, uh, this is just my personal opinion. I think that Windows is priced way over the top from Microsoft. So if you do want it cheaper, I'll leave those links down below, uh, but it's completely up to you what you wanna do with that. I find myself using Google's services much more often than anything else. It's on all of my devices. I've got Gmail, I've got YouTube, I've got plenty of other services. So one of the first things I do is download Chrome. I also find it a lot faster than a lot of other internet browsers. So I'm gonna get that installed. Okay, so the next step, I want us to think about our GPU drivers. I have an NVIDIA GPU. You may have an Intel GPU, so you need to visit intel.com, or you may have an AMD GPU, so you need to go to amd.com. So I'm going to search up NVIDIA drivers. Now, personally, I'm going to do a manual search. You could do an automatic driver search if you don't know what your GPU is. However, I know exactly what my GPU is. So I'm gonna start the search. Now you can get the game driver or the studio driver. I'm going to be gaming primarily on this particular PC, so I'm going to download that. I wanna tell you guys about a few things that have happened to me. So before I have actually had games that have not been able to open up because the graphics drivers have been outdated. So the game is updated. Now the new graphics drivers, they bring in the new features in order to run those new updates. However, because I haven't downloaded the new update, the game is not able to open. So one way you can avoid this is to download NVIDIA graphics driver and GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience will actually tell you when there is a new graphics driver to download and will prompt you to do it automatically. So all you have to do is hit accept on it and it'll do the work for you. You don't have to manually go and check on the website every single time to see if there is a new version of a driver. So I'd actually recommend downloading GeForce Experience as well. So in GeForce Experience, all you need to do if you're worried, now this will pop up by itself, but you can manually just check for updates just by pressing that button and it'll say that we have the latest GeForce game ready driver. Okay guys, this is a real pet peeve of mine and I always do it. When I'm downloading games, I like to go get lunch or something like that. I've got the games downloading on Steam. However, I come back and my games are at 1% and the PC screen is turned off. That is because we need to go into display settings. We also need to type in power. We need to find the power and sleep battery settings. Then we go to screen sleep timeouts and we want to set these turn off my screen after never, and also make my device sleep after never. That way, when you're going away and you're waiting for games and things to download, your PC is not actually gonna shut off on you and stop at 5%. I want my PC to be a time saver, not a time waster. Now guys, you may have sold your kidney to buy yourself an amazing monitor. It has Super high numbers, so it means it's the best of the best. But did you know a lot of people forget to enable all of the settings to get the best performance out of it? So we need to right click, we need to go to display settings. Let's check out the advanced display information. Wait, what is this? My monitor is running at 29.97 hertz. That doesn't seem right. This monitor is a 60 hertz monitor. Let's enable that. Now guys, you will find that a lot of monitors these days, especially those gaming ones, they go up to 100 hertz, 144 hertz and beyond. A lot of the time, the default is 60 hertz that it's set to. So make sure you enable this, otherwise you are not getting the performance out of it. Now for those of you who are using an NVIDIA GPU, if you go to adjust image settings with preview, you can actually toggle around with this setting right here. Use my preference emphasizing quality or performance. If you want a little more performance out of your PC, you can actually take this all the way over to performance or you can have a balanced preference or you can have a quality preference by taking it all the way over there. Now, I'm just gonna let the 3D application decide for me, but it's just one thing to keep in mind. Now guys, what good is a new PC without the latest updates? So we need to make sure that our Windows is completely up to date, otherwise we're not going to be getting the smoothest and best performance out of it. Let's download, install it, get it all up to date, 
And guys, you may have to go through a few restarts as well, especially for the first time. So just check to see if there is any updates after you restart the PC and eventually it'll be completely done. Microsoft, what have you installed on my PC that is gonna slow it down? Yes. You install lots of bloatware on here, and so there are many programs that you may want to get rid of just to speed up your PC that much more. So I don't actually have no idea what Sound Recorder is. I don't need that. Let's uninstall it. I don't use anything to do with Xbox on this PC. So I'm going to uninstall Xbox. But you get the idea. Go through all of the apps that are installed on your PC by Microsoft and make sure to get rid of them so they're not using up extra resources on your PC so the PC can delegate that towards the things that matter. Now, what's your main focus with your PC? Well, for me, it's gonna be gaming. And so most likely, you're going to want to install Steam. Steam is a huge game library with all of your favorite games. You can also install Epic Games. That is another game library and you can actually get some free games from that as well. So go ahead and install Steam and Epic Games because that's where the majority of users go and buy their PC games. Guys, if you're planning to game on your PC, majority of gamers use Discord for voice. Now, if you are not in Discord for voice, you are at a serious disadvantage, especially if you're being more competitive. By the way, guys, we actually have our own Discord for our YouTube channel. So if you wanna go and join our community and go and see other people's PC builds, go and get some help or just talk to us in general, then feel free to join our Discord. I'll leave that link down below. Now, every single motherboard requires drivers or utilities to function properly. So if you are planning on cabling your PC to LAN, you may need to download LAN drivers. If you plan on running it on wireless, you may need to download wireless drivers. And also if you plan on using anything Bluetooth related, you probably need to download a Bluetooth driver. However, if you have RGB in your system, you may also need to download the utilities such as Armory Crate, which contains the RGB for this specific system. So all you need to do is type in your motherboard's name into Google and find where it says driver and utility. I always download this for my system and it's completely up to the individual, but it helps me to keep an eye on my FPS and my temperatures as well. This is called MSI Afterburner. And you'll see at the end of every single PC video that I've been doing recently, I'll have my gameplay and I'll have the MSI Afterburner stats in the top left. And this is actually how I get all of the FPS results for my benchmarks. So this right here is MSI Afterburner and essentially, a lot of people now use it for benchmark overlays. However, it has also been used a lot for GPU overclocking. However, we're not going to go into that today. I definitely don't wanna go frying your GPUs. Let's go into settings. And then if we go to monitoring, you can actually pick what you want on screen. So GPU one temperature, it is ticked right here. And all I need to do is show in on-screen display, enable that, and then I hit apply. Also, I may want CPU temperature. So if I go ahead and I find where it says CPU temperature, that is already ticked. All I need to do is click show in on-screen display and then hit apply. Now I may want FPS as well. So if I go and find frame rate, I need to tick it. I need to click on it and I need to click show in on-screen display, click apply and hit okay. So now it is ready to go. However, because we have a 4K monitor in games, this will look very small. So if I go back into settings and then I click on-screen display, I click more. And then right here, you can see how big the number is. So there is an on-screen display zoom here that I can play with to make the numbers bigger. Now, depending on how big you want it, that's completely up to you. So I'm going to set it at a nice comfortable size so it's right in the corner, but I can still read it. Now guys, I don't just wanna make the claim that this will increase your performance. I actually wanna show you. So here is my favorite game, Rocket League, where we went from 570 FPS to 598 FPS just by enabling all of these features. Now I also wanted to show you guys something more graphically intense. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Now with all of our settings disabled, we were actually able to achieve 105 FPS. While enabling these settings may not seem like a big jump, it is a jump for just five minutes work. 
we were able to achieve 108 FPS. Now at the end of the day, it is free performance and it depends whether you wanna utilize all of your PC's features or not. Let me know in the comments below, do you utilize all of Windows features or are there some settings that perhaps you haven't enabled yet? Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you all in the next one.